Hola, woodworkers. Paul Carlson here, a small workshop guy. Some time ago, I was building a lot of jigs with match fit dovetail grooves so that I could use the match fit dovetail clamps. And one of the jigs that I built, and the rest of them have all worked out great. The one that did not work out very well is the one I did for my drill press. This was hard to adjust uh, and slide back and forth. Maybe it was just the finish I put on here. And I have since realized or discovered that you, you never put polyurethane. When you use like a Forstner bit, you get some pretty good sizable chunks uh, coming off of there. And drill presses are a little bit cumbersome to get a good dust collection, although on this new one I'm building, I'm gonna solve that problem. But uh, what would happen is these larger chips would get in these grooves, and then as you're trying to use match fit dovetail clamps to do hold downs or things, or even here, things wouldn't slide well. So it got pretty frustrating. I decided that it was a mistake. So, what did I do? Well, I started from scratch, and I built this. So this is nothing more than two pieces of Baltic birch half inch plywood and uh, laminated together. Now I did some work on the top piece before I laminated them. Uh, one of the things I did on the top piece was I engraved my logo using my Shaper Origin. You don't need to have to have that on there, but it's nice to have. Here's a mistake I made. I'll, I'll disclose my mistakes to you. That's just the kind of guy I am. I thought, hey, I'd like that to stand out a little bit more. And that was before I had put a finish on it. Mistake. I, I took a, you know, a black marker, really, really fine one, and I tried to put black on the inside of this. And it looked great until I put on the finish and then the finish bled. And so now I got to kind of smudge. Oh, well. It's just a drill press table, folks. It's not a piece of fine furniture. It does have a dovetail slot on the bottom or groove on the bottom, but only long enough so that I can put that on the table and then slide in a dovetail clamp and tighten that up against my table. That, with the cutout for the, you know, the drill press pillar, those two things lock it in tightly so it doesn't move around. And then instead of the dovetail grooves, I went ahead and used the, the you know, normal T-track. And uh, that way, that's slippery. I shouldn't have any problem with it sliding. I should be able to set my fence uh, very easily. And, uh, <laughs> and I just realized that I might have a design problem probably would have been a good idea for this to be over here. I'll probably go ahead and add a, another one because if I'm going to have my fence back here, I got to have some place to hold it down over on this side. Anyway, I told you I would show you my mistakes. This is uh, it. I rounded the edges uh, and I did a round over bit around all the corners. Now we not only uh, engraved that with a shaper origin, but we also uh, cut out the four by four hole. The shaper origin is very, very precise. So rather than trying to drill holes in the corner and use a jigsaw and get something very precise, I can get a precise rectangle with my uh, shaper origin CNC router. And so then while we were at it, we made a lot of these uh, inserts so that they could be used eight times. You're gonna this has been offset, as you can see, the middle of the, the, um, the drill bit is going to be over in this bottom corner here. And so it's offset so I can rotate it, rotate it, rotate it. Then I can flip it over and do it on the other side. So that's worth eight different support cuts right there, sacrificial fences. So that is my new drill press table. It is going to get another slot in here for the back fence. Hope you 
understand what I've been able to improve from my old design. And uh, if anything's wrong with this, I'll be redoing it again in the future. A very inventive jig for holding your shop vac hose over at your drill press table. If you're like me, you've been struggling to try to clamp a uh, shop vac hose over at your drill press in any decent way. So I went for a detailed search. My Google search led me to a website called Wood Archivist. And it's got a lot of different things there that you might want to take a look at. So this is what it's going to look like when it gets assembled on the drill press. This is going to go around the drill press column. Uh, this gets cut so that you can fit it around that column and then secure it on that column. And then the shop vac hose is going to go in here and this slides back and forth. The components are just two square pieces of three quarter inch plywood. Probably Baltic birch would be best. And then you just follow the plans to put a uh, half inch dowel hole in here and then laminate that in there. And then this is going to help connect where this part comes apart. And then there's just going to be a screw in here to hold this part. So you get that around the clamp and then you secure it, but it, there is a way to take it off. This is nothing more than a half inch uh, dowel hole going all the way through it. And then a quarter inch to receive this little tightening device here. And the only other thing that you did was I put it over the table saw and ran it over the blade at a height to get this slot so that this would clamp down and tighten up around this bar and hold it very nicely wherever I want it. So here's the way this works. Uh, this piece around the shaft here of the drill press will tighten and loosen so that you can turn it and raise it up and down. And then that's got a half inch dowel in it. And that dowel goes through another piece and that piece has a slot in it and a tightener. And so you can slide that piece back and forth on that dowel. You can also tip it up or down. Now I'd have to loosen it to do that. So this tightener allows it to stay in place. So if I had some reason I needed it to be up here, then I can get it up here. So you can literally get it right next to your drill bit and get a really good result. This is the first jig for the drill press I've been able to come up with to allow me to put that shop back hose exactly where I want it. Hey, stay safe in your workshop. Do an old coot a favor. Give me a like, give me a comment, give me a subscription. And if you want to be in a super rare group of supportive work woodworkers, then give me a little Patreon support of a couple dollars a month for a few months. Be much appreciated. Got a lot of overhead trying to run this channel. Small Workshop Guy, signing off.